Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast, the podcast dedicated to simplifying the commercial real estate industry for the masses. Each week, we sit down with industry experts to dissect the many facets of commercial real estate and extract valuable lessons you can apply to your business. Whether you're a new or seasoned business owner or investor, the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast will be your go-to resource for all your commercial real estate needs. Now, here are your hosts, Rafael Collazo and Jeff Walston. Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rafael Collazo, here with my co-host, Jeff Walston. How's it going, my friend? It is going amazing. Uh, great work week so far we're in the middle of it. And um, everything's going well. 2022 is going, it's looking to be going to be a very extremely busy year. So uh, a lot of people are uh, just going all in with uh, projects and I'm excited. What about you, Raphael? How's it going yeah, over there? It's going well too. I mean, same, same on my end, you know, we've been getting a lot more calls of people who are optimistic about, you know, starting a business or expanding a business in 2022. So I think a lot of people are starting to realize, Hey, you know, this, this pandemic has become an endemic and now we're yeah. going to start getting back to some semblance of normalcy. And that's going to be really good for business, I think in 2022. So I'm very optimistic, similar to you uh, regarding the, the business prospects for 2022. And speaking of just, you know, optimism and, and great conversation, uh, we actually had Ryan Sullivan, uh, who's the CEO of Podcast Principles. Uh, it's a uh, company that helps people manage and, and launch uh, podcasts. And so it's a little bit different than, you know, what we typically have on the, the, the show. However, I think it's extremely applicable as it pertains to branding. And, and a lot of people who are listening to our podcast, you know, you're in the commercial real estate business and utilizing a podcast to be able to amplify your personal brand, in my opinion, is a great way to do, great way to build that brand in, in a broader sense. And so some of the things we talked about within the podcast itself is that we talked about, uh, you know, how he got interested in the podcasting space. Uh, he has an interesting background as well because he is a music producer and DJ and that sort of thing. And so he utilized the skill sets that he had garnered from that, those experiences to now what he's doing in the podcasting space. Then we also talked about why someone should start a podcast. And then once they decided that they want to start a podcast, what are some of the top things they need to consider prior to launching their first episode? And then along that, along with that, we talked a little bit about, you know, once if, if you are listening to this podcast and you have your own podcast and maybe you're not seeing the, the level of success that you thought you would have uh, over the course of the last you know several months that you've pro been producing the podcast, what are some of the things you can do in order to amplify your downloads and grow that that podcast over time? And then finally, we, we touched on some of the, the his prospects as far as what he thinks the podcast industry is going to look like in the next five to 10 years as it's somewhat not necessarily in its infancy yet or anymore, but it's it's still growing super rapidly. Um, we touched on some of the top figures within the podcast industry and some of the numbers that are really just gaudy. I mean, it's amazing to see how many downloads, you know, the Joe Rogans of the world, the Tim Ferriss's of the world get on a regular basis. So, you know, I, I found it extremely insightful and super helpful. And, you know, we're going to implement some of the things that we talked about in our, in this podcast, into our own podcast. And, you know, Jeff, what do you, what do you have? What do you like to add? I mean, just he, Ryan just shared a lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, knowledge, um, especially people to people that are wanting to start a podcast. I think you guys will gain a lot from this episode, uh, particularly uh, the core foundations of how, you know, what you need to get set up before you even consider launching your first episode. And I think uh, Ryan with uh, podcast principles, if you go to there, that I think it'll really help. And uh, you guys will love this episode. Can't wait for you to hear it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I know. And and like uh, while, while we were doing our podcast episode, Jeff was taking notes on different topics to or different things that he had talked about that we're now going to go back and try to apply to our podcast as well. So we gained a significant amount of value and I'm sure you guys will as well. Uh, prior to us hopping into the episode, we just want to thank you all so much for being so supportive of the podcast over the last eight to nine months since we started it back in May of 2021. Uh, we've seen a significant uptick in our downloads recently. And a big part of that, in my opinion, is because you guys have continued to leave us five star reviews on our podcast. So if you guys don't mind, if you could take a few seconds, go to go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review, leave us a comment and then share some of the insights that you garnered from the podcast and maybe some of the things you'd like to see us or guests you'd like to see us invite on the podcast. It would be greatly helpful to our podcast and it really has helped immensely as far as the downloads are concerned. So thanks again for doing that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the episode. So welcome, Ryan. Great to see you this fine morning. Great to see you too. Thanks for uh, yeah. having me. I'm excited. Yeah, welcome, buddy. 
Oh, for sure. And for, for those of you guys who don't know, we I actually got connected with Ryan through LinkedIn. Um, and he actually knows a gentleman that we've gotten to know over the last several months, Jesse Fuchsia, who has a great commercial real estate podcast that he he's runs. And a big reason why it's as successful as it is, is because of Ryan and his team. So we're really excited to kind of dive into this podcast episode to learn more about how to run an effective podcast. So again, welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. Like we said, off call, Jesse is a beast and he really took the uh, took the process and just ran with it and, and he's thriving with his podcast. So excited to dive into anything podcast related and, uh, you know, launch production, whatever it might be. Let's do it. For, for sure, man. So first off, what we usually do when we invite people on the podcast is to learn a little bit more about them. So if you don't mind, kind of tell us a little bit about your your backstory. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, there's a lot to it. I'll try to keep it on more on the shorter side because there's a few different angles and directions I can go. But, you know, over the past um, few years, I've, I've really dedicated everything to podcasts. And how I got there was in 2018 on a whim, I started a podcast after listening to Joe Rogan for years and just thought the platform, I just thought the medium was cool. I thought it was interesting. I always liked people. I was always interested in people. Um, I'm actually a rapper and a producer and I've been releasing music for five years. So I kind of like developed a small network around that developed a fan base around my music and then i'm like okay cool if i start a podcast maybe like just a certain percentage of the people will end up watching it and and i'll just do it for me and i literally just looked at the camera recorded the first two episodes by myself and just you know me myself the mic and the camera and that was it and the first couple episodes got like 200 views on my youtube and i'm at that point I just said, all right, that's more than enough to get started. And and as you go through podcasting and things like that, as you you two know as well, when you start something and launch something, it has a kind of a groundswell. So people all gravitate towards it because they want to see what it is, but then it gets normalized and they don't care as much anymore. And now you have to go and, and there's your core audience of people who do still care. Um, and then the peripheral audience of people that are like, oh yeah, he has a podcast. Like, and, you know, uh, they're, they're used to it now. So then you want to grow and expand. So, uh, you know, for, through that, I had been making music and, and, and creating audio and I learned how to make beats because I couldn't purchase beats cause I would, didn't have enough money to make beats for my own music. So I started to learn music production. And from that, I started to learn podcast production because I realized that if I put an episode out and did it, edit it. It would get less views than the ones that were edited and it would get less shares. And I'm like, okay, let, like this is something, but I have to learn how to actually do this. Interned at a music studio for free, um, was living off savings. This was during college, was making no money. And, but I just knew like, okay, I need to learn how to do this professionally and then I can do it. Then I can try to make money from it because I was a mechanic for three or four years. Didn't want to do that anymore. That was my day job. I wanted to take my five to nine and make it my nine to five. So that was my uh, kind of my my start was let me see if I can become a freelancer. Let me see if I can edit other people's podcasts. And at the same time, still have my podcast, but I couldn't figure out how to monetize it. Couldn't figure out how to monetize music. And one thing I knew was how to work and how to learn stuff. So I'm like, okay, let me learn how to edit other people's stuff and I'll make money and that'll be able to support my podcast. So that's a little bit of background on kind of how it went from, I'm just like a mechanic to then, and somebody in college to then, you know, starting to be a freelancer, editing other people's podcasts. It's turned into this business now over the past, really over the past year, taking it from freelancer to business owner. But, you know, I can go into more detail, but that's kind of the short of it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Man. And, and the cool thing about what, you, what you're saying, too, is you took kind of like a passion that you have, which is obviously music, and then applied the skill sets that you garnered from that experience into something that is, 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 again, blowing up. I mean, podcasting, again, started, you know, maybe a decade ago, but it's still consistently growing and there's more and more podcasts coming online and people are starting to see the value of being able to create a podcast for a business for a business uh for business acquisition and really just creating content for people to consume because again if you become that recognized es expert in whatever you decide to do it can lend credence to people that potentially want to do business with you and so yeah. uh, that's a smart way to kind of approach that process well, you, you, it's interesting that you said that you were like editing and doing all that production and spending all that time. And uh, I kind of want to talk about that in particular because uh, Raphael and I, just the whole process of that and how many hours it takes that you can go through uh, and you were doing that all on your own. That That's pretty incredible in my mind that uh, you're taking the time to make it even better for yourself. Um, but then you were also talking about Joe Rogan that got you interested. Was there a particular like uh, podcast that was like, you know what? I can do this. Like, was there an aha moment 
when you were listening to Joe Hogan and uh, to get you in the podcast space, or was it just like, if he can do it, I can do it. But what were your thoughts on that? That's a great question. Yeah, I, I don't think that there was a moment, but there was just that kind of thought in my head of like, wow, this seems so simple. And now I'm not saying that, and obviously we know that it's it's not, but it's like seeing a comedian on, on stage and just thinking they're talking, right? And yeah. that's kind of the thing that I thought where I was just naive um, and, and, and young, but I ended up kind of, I ended up, the medium ended up fitting me and I kind of got lucky. So I got lucky with the fact that my personality kind of fit for it. Not that I was a good interviewer. I was a terrible interviewer, but there was that. And then as you mentioned before in the beginning of that, which was, yeah, the timing, I think Raphael mentioned is like, yeah, podcasts are blowing up. Like the timing just happened to be perfect. They've been around for 20 years. Now they're just gaining traction. And so I was just in this piece of time. Um, but, but yeah, no, I, I just, I just liked the podcast and I had always, I had made, um, I had got a YouTube video to a few hundred thousand views when I was in middle school and stuff like that. So I knew that like media and, and I learned how to make money on YouTube. And, and so I knew there was money online, you know, and I, and I had that even from a young age, but I didn't realize the, uh, you know, kind of potential of, of podcasting. And then I dove into it and I'm like, wow, this is way more work than I thought. And that's why, you know, he has a team, but still to this day, Joe Rogan does all his own booking. I don't know if people know that, but um, he, he, like he texts all his guests and, and sets up the time. So, but, but yeah, everything beyond that <laughs> is outsourced. Uh, but I had to learn that along the way too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and we were doing pretty much everything our, on our end until just recently where we got a VA involved. So, you know, again, it, there's a lot of back end processes involved with pro, with the production of a podcast. And that's why a lot of people, at least that's how we started off. We started releasing a, a podcast episode a week and now we're, we're going to be pushing out about two episodes a week. And that's all by being able to bring someone in to kind of dedicate more time to it. But you're right. There's so many moving parts. And a lot of times it's like failing forward. And I feel like that's with anything in life is you take on a new adventure, you take on a new, uh, you know, path. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, I really know what to do, what I'm doing, but let me try this out. If it didn't work great, let's move on to the next thing and, or, or move on to the next step. And over time, he's just become a much more fluid with it. And then it just becomes a habit. And now it's like Jeff and I have a couple interviews a week where we, you know, interview people on interesting topics pertaining to commercial real estate and branding. And I mean, you know, again, our podcast is consistently growing. So uh, it, it kind of is a testament to just getting started, really. Yeah, you got to yeah. do it. It's like that deal, right? It's like, okay, I have every, I know everything about this deal. There's not one thing that I don't know. I know what this, where the septic tag's at. I know all this stuff, right? But you still, until it's your, until you own it, then you, then you know, like there's only so much you can predict. So same thing with yeah. real estate, launching a business, launching a podcast, you know, uh, having a project car, you know, you, th you think that your manifolds right until you put it in, you know? So it's, it's uh, yeah. One of those things, it's definitely a learn as you go <laughs> and learn, oh, yeah. you're going to learn fast. <laughs> yeah. For sure. oh, for, oh, for sure. Yeah. And then there's a lot of resources out there too. So if for some reason you don't know something again, YouTube is super great. That's I, how I did that. all of this YouTube, you baby, YouTube. Exactly. University. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, man, what you can find online. So there is a subsect of our audience. And, you know, I've had other people reach out to me that have asked me this exact same question is, why should I even start a podcast? Like, what's the value there? And these a lot of a lot of times it's people who maybe, you know, are a little bit more established in their career. And, you know, they've had some success in what they're doing, but they just don't see the value of just dedicating the time and energy necessary in order to build something like this. So you could, could you kind of tell people uh, that are a, you know, just brand new or the career, or a little bit more established, why there's value in being, having a podcast medium. Yeah. I think the obvious one is the content. Like, I think the obvious one is the fact that you get this audio and video content and the beauty of a podcast, this is why it's different. And to set the context here and put it in perspective for people, there's 10 million more weekly podcast listeners than there are total Netflix subscribers. So this podcasting thing is just this silently growing mass. It's like the iceberg that you only see the little top of it, right? So podcasting itself is so easily consumable and the availability of it, that's why it's growing so fast and so large because I'll you know, be walking down the street listening, then I'll come back to my house or say at the end of the day, I'll put my feet up, I'll watch the video, and then I'll be scrolling on Instagram and see a clip all from the same podcast. So that doesn't happen with a show on Netflix is extremely visual um, medium. And that's just one example. Um, but it, and when it comes to alternatives, like what is your alternative? Well, I guess sitting down and recording one video at a time, 
um, you know, then you, okay. So now you're just only going short form. So now you don't have any long form for the audio and the video platform. So the content thing is that's the most obvious one for me, where it's, if you design this podcast correctly, you could essentially get, um, you can get, have all of your media and content planned out from only shooting one hour. If you just do it or 30 minutes or whatever, if you just plan it out correctly. So it's extremely, um, it's, you can, the, the, the repurposing is, is incredible. So the content, that's like the obvious one that I always push towards people is like, why record 20 videos, just record one podcast. And then the kind of subset uh, benefits of that or the, or the other benefits are like, you guys can take what I'm saying right now, transcribe it, post it on your website for SEO. And now you're getting SEO from what I said. So people are going to your website based on what I said, and then that's going to link to my website. So it'll go from that Google search to your podcast, to your website, to my website, and then back to me. So like, there's all these other side benefits that, that people usually don't realize until they do it. I could go off an hour on all of the benefits, but I think the content one is the most obvious one where, why would you, once again, why would you record all these different pieces of content when you could just do it once and then cut it up and it becomes a blog, a short form, a TikTok, a long form um, uh, article on LinkedIn, uh, an SEO optimized show notes so people can find you on Google, et cetera. Et cetera. So that's the big one for me. No, oh, for sure. It's 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 the leverage you can have, and 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 again, we've kind of experienced that just with what we're doing, right? You have the the audio format that you amplify on mediums like Podbean or Anchor or whatever that'll distribute it to all the different podcast mediums. You have YouTube where you have the long form video that people can consume. You know, we well, like I said, we've we've gotten via involved at this point, and now they're creating short clips that you can consume on Instagram, TikTok, and all these other mediums, and the transcription piece, which again, we're, we're, we're going to consider incorporating here in the near future and just creating like blog posts that we can post on our website, on LinkedIn and all these other mediums that all comes from literally a 45 minute to a, an hour conversation. And if you can incorporate someone within your team that can handle that, 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 those, those components, I mean, you, you only have to dedicate an hour of time to get the, the, the stuff done and then everything else kind of works in the background. And so, you know, I think that's amazing. And one of the books that kind of is completely unrelated to podcasting, but kind of informed me on the, the potential of, of, of media in general when it comes to uh, giving you know value to other people is this book called High Output Management. It's actually a management book, but the way he described it in, in, one, in one scenario was that he, he said, you know, you could sit down with an employee and try to explain the process from start to finish. And in that scenario, it's a one-to-one -one interaction, meaning that you're able to relay the message from one person to the other. Now, in a situation where you record something, now you can amplify it to thousands of people because and, and they can learn how to do the same task. And that same logic applies to podcasting as well. And so, you know, I, I always I always kind of reference that when I'm telling people, I'm like, dude, there's, there's creating content in general, whether that's in podcast format, or other media types of format is the way to go. So mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, definitely. So I want to paint a scenario here. So someone starts pod a podcast um, and now they want to make it more effective. So what are three, I mean, it could be three to five components that make a podcast effective. Uh, can you go through that and see? Oh yeah. Um, so first is um, goals, which ties into ideal listener. So who is going to, first of all, these are, I'll, I'll, I'll frame it with two questions. One of yeah. them is what would you specifically like to address about this topic? I can have a real estate podcast or a commercial real estate podcast. They're both about real estate, but they're both talking about different things. The difference lies in the specifics and the details. If somebody has a podcast about self-improvement for podcast producers, I'm instantly a fan. I don't even care how good or bad that podcast is. I'm going to have to listen to it because it's so specific to me. So I think first off, podcasts who, I, who, who say to themselves, podcasters, shows who go, the 80%, I'm not concerned with those people. I want the 20% of people who go, that's me. You know, like I am going through that or I can learn from that. And so you want to segment the audience. You want you don't want a broad general audience. You want a specific audience that identifies your, with your content on a deeper level. So that's kind of number one goals, you know, and that ties back to what's the goal of this podcast. If you guys go into it and you say we want sales. 
cool. That's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's that people go in and say, I want to do this. It's a passion project. And then they're like, but oh, I'm not making any money. Well, you wanted to do it as a passion project. You should have set your goal in the beginning as you wanted to make do it as a lead generation or demand generation function or, or pieces of content. So the goals and the ideal listeners, that kind of those questions getting answered in the beginning usually changes a lot. I just sat down with a gentleman yesterday who's interviewing people um, with a wrestling background who also, or a martial arts background who also are going into business. And like, we decided that that martial arts piece after talking for an hour and a half was actually not as important as we thought it was, right? But it took us an hour and a half of going through these questions to figure out, actually, this might be a little bit more broad. I don't wanna put myself in a box, et cetera. So a lot of people will just dive in there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I did. But a lot of people just dive in and not really answer those foundational questions and get real with what am I actually trying to do with this thing? So ideal listeners, that's from goals. The ideal listener is from your actual goal. You reverse engineer the podcast to achieve the goal with that ideal listener in mind. And finally, consistency. You have to like you guys are going, you're going from one a week to two a week. You're not going from, well, we do a few a year, but you know, sometimes in some months we'll do three and other months we'll do 10 like that's not what you're doing that's not how you build a podcast because in a podcast you are asking people you're saying hey i'm going to deliver this value this resources we're going to take the time to do it rafael and jeff we're going to be like we are the guys we are going to take all that time to develop that resource interview these people in exchange for your time so if you're asking them to exchange to give you their time it has to be predictable i don't add you to a google calendar invite and expect you to show up after not coordinating it with you before right so mm -hmm. those are kind of that's an all-encompassing view of like what i see as the most successful and we can talk about angles and content and strategy and production and all these other things but you got to have the ideal listener you got to have your goal and you got to stay consistent amazing advice I, I mean i i couldn't agree more with what you just said and i think that building that foundation before you start anything in my opinion is smart because you know I'll, I, there is something to be said about just getting started and doing what you need to do to get things done. But in reality, if you take a little bit of time to think about what the purpose of what you're trying to do is, and then kind of build on top of that, you're going to have a much sturdier foundation as opposed to doing something kind of sporadically for a couple of weeks and then saying, Oh, well, maybe this isn't the direction I want to go. And then you're kind of stopping and starting endlessly. So you're, I think that's, that's great advice. And on the consistency piece, I, I think that's also, I mean, again, a game changer. I've, I've met a lot of people who have had a podcast and we even talked about this a little bit online where you had offline, where you had a gentleman who you, you had communicated with, who had a podcast that had, this has been sitting there forever. He had, you know, he released several episodes and, you know, you're, you're, you're considering even potentially buying it from the guy because it's like, man, like, you know, it, it has the history, but it's just, you weren't consistent about it for an extended period. And again, it's kind of laying there and waiting for someone else to take hold of it. So. Yeah, most podcasts go to the grave. Most podcasts go to the podcast graveyard. Most meaning like 90%. And I saw a metric that it was 80, 90% of podcasts don't get, get past episode eight. But then I just saw something on Reddit the other day that said it was episode three. And so, you know, that ties into what I do, which is I help people launch them so they can keep them consistent, right? But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's a scary metric to me. But this is the thing. The barrier to entry in podcasting is nothing other than work. It's just yeah. work or delegation and creating systems. It's a business. There's a lot of moving parts, you know? And so I think people jump in and they can handle one episode, but when you're doing six hours of editing a week, it adds up, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. And, 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 and I think the game changer for, for us when we first started was that I'd never took on the editing process because it was so cumbersome. And so I actually outsourced a lot of that from the beginning. I, we, we contracted a gentleman on Fiverr to handle, you know, all the edit video editing. And then we'd, tra we'd get, we'd, we'd transfer the MP4 and MP3 format that we could distribute via our, our platform, like anchor, for example. So that, that cut out a lot of the editing side of things. And again, I mean, I'm sure there weren't as high as quality as, as someone who spent the time and in the appropriate software to make it look great. But again, it just, it was all about just building those habits and building consistency starting out for us. And now it's kind of like, we've got our systems documented. Uh, we've created like video, uh, you know, instructional videos on Loom, which is a video sharing software with, that I shared with like our VA. And now they're able to kind of take on the, the responsibility and, and make it happen. But from the start, I mean, it was a lot of just getting it clear on what exactly we want to do, what's the mission of what we're trying to do. And then from there, scheduling guests and build, building up a little bit of a, of, a, of a cushion as far as the episode releases are concerned 
And then from there, you know, you know, just building out those systems, like you said. So that that's awesome, man. So one thing I wanted to ask you is that, you know, you've, you've, I'm sure you've convinced some people at this point that starting a podcast is a smart thing to do. Um, you know, what would you recommend as far as, you know, once you've determined, Hey, this is my target audience, you know, I've, I've narrowed down my, my focus area and really want to start getting after it as far as podcasting is concerned, what are some of those steps to get you to launch date and what, what, what advice would you recommend? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of just fundamentals and that's why my business is called podcast principles, because I'm, I, I'm always the person that wants to go and like do everything. What's the next thing. And it's like, let's get these core foundational elements um, done. But you know, what we have is a six call onboarding process. We have a done with you um, portion of our, of our entire process. And, and I won't go, you know, deeply into that, but I, I say that to make the point that that planning is really essential. So once we, we start with that strategy, right, let's determine everything that I mentioned in the ideal listener. So once we get the ideal listener, now what we create is called the series framework that this is not every single episode. It's just what are all the ideas, potential ideas for episodes? Because are we going to go episodic, meaning that you need to, it would benefit you to listen to episode four before episode one or episode four after episode one and go in a chronological order? Or are we going to have a guest based show where every guest has something different? Um, or are we going to have a solo podcast? Uh, are we going to have a narrative? Like format is once we get down, okay, we want to do this. It, the, once we get the what and the why, then comes the how, right? So you guys have a co-hosted podcast where you interview a guest. Okay, that would be a decision. Now we're going to decide also on length, right? So what are we going to do? Are we going to go for, is it going to be a Joe Rogan three hour? Is it going to be 30 <laughs> minutes condensed to 10? Like I said, I recorded a you know podcast for hours that ended up being five minutes, you know? So um, then, then it's, then that question comes up a format. Um, and so, but I think as far as like steps for launching the, I, I would just touch on the thing that I think people miss, which is we get a lot of energy when it comes to creating the podcast, recording it, editing it, like creating the thing. But then when it comes to launch and release and promotion, to get it to people's ears, that's where we lose steam because we just put in so much work to create the thing itself. So that's what I would recommend. Like, sure, I could list off the things of like step one, step two, step three, but just know that any way you can, you have to expose your audience to this thing. And I don't care if you message 13 to 80 people from high school that you haven't talked to in nine years, like the, it, a portion of them are gonna listen to. So I'm just, I've been in my own, experience the promotional side of things has been probably my most difficult because i've so kind of obsessed with the long form itself but if you're not you know you can be the best artist in the world but if you never release a song nobody's ever going to know about you so that's what i would say is when the preparation before launch that month before is having a ton of promotional materials and it literally could be text-based linkedin posts which is free to create right but like just pushing that out there um and like putting it allowing people to know right and now you you we mentioned jesse jesse fuchsia who hosts wealth science when people think about jesse they think about wealth science they think about the podcast it's a figment of his brand so that's where i think people kind of lose steam or they just are not educated on how to do the promotional side and i'm not an expert on that but i know from doing it enough times that that's a really important element before the launch that's great no I, and, yeah uh, go ahead jeff what were you saying no, I mean, I agree with him for absolutely. Uh, especially I, I like the point that you point out is like you, you gotta get those core foundations set right to build anything that's great. So uh, I like that that you pointed that out. So definitely that was yeah, the one and, thing. And, yeah, and then I would even I would even add on to that as far as the 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 promotion piece. Cause that <laughs> right. that's one of the things that you know a lot of people just kind of fail to uh, really focus on is that you know, like you said, you may have an initial influx of people who watch your thing your stuff but any type of media that you produce requires constant promotion and reaching out to people and encouraging people to to, to subscribe and 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 give you five stars reviews and again it, it's a constant uh push and so a lot of people they, they don't realize that and then they 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 get they release it to some fanfare and then all of a sudden it just plummets off and that kind of discourages people because it's like well you know i just put in so much effort into trying to produce the the actual episodes but in reality it, it is a constant 
you know, promotional type of thing. You have to get out there on a regular basis. And I've written several books. And, and part of that process is that launch piece, which is like, yes, you can, you can take six months to write a book. But if you don't have that good framework as far as getting the book out there and promoting it on a regular basis, it's not it's not going to go anywhere. And so I think you can apply it to really any media, whether it's podcasts, I'm sure in your case with music and, you know, also mm-hmm. with with digital media as well. Yeah, staying relevant is tough. It really is a consistent. You have to just constantly like that's the thing is, though, I don't even remember what you posted yesterday. I don't even remember what I posted three days ago. Most people just forget there's so much content. So and what to not to use Jesse as every example here, but like what he does is he just drops a clip every day. It could be from any of his episodes that he's dropped, but he's going to just drop that clip in there because he knows that even if it's 100 views, 20%, 30%, 20%, 30%, whatever, are going to go then watch it, right? And those are people that yesterday, or they didn't remember that he dropped that clip two weeks ago. Nobody remembers. So it's, and, and really that repurposing and getting, taking the emotion out of it and going just like, okay, I got to like just push this content. Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough to stay consistent on the release anyway. And then you yeah. got to promote it three times a day. Like it's tough, yeah. it's a lot. And some, yeah. and some people are uncomfortable promoting themselves, you know, and that's something that's a fear that you almost have to get over. Mm-hmm. If you, if you want to scale in, in any type of endeavor is that you have to realize that, you know, you, you do provide value to the marketplace. And if the content is good, which it should be, if you're, if you're going to be putting an effort to produce it, then, you know, again, it, it, it's a message that people need to hear and you need to be consistent about pushing it out to others. So. Absolutely. So let's do another scenario thing here. So say you released a podcast, uh, it's doing okay, but it's not totally significant downloads that you're getting. Uh, other than like releasing content every day, is there any more advice you would give to like help improve the metrics and the, the ratings and to get more downloads? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things. I would say um, play. you have to play to the platform. I just know a lot of people who try to release LinkedIn videos on TikTok and they're like, why is TikTok? I thought TikTok was amazing. And it's like, nah, you just don't understand the type of content you need for TikTok. Like, TikTok, you need like cut. There's no breaths. There's no ums. It's just this, 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 just bang, 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 bang. So I think if I think what happens is, yeah, they'll promote to Facebook and LinkedIn and then you'll get those results from that, um, which will be good. But then if you want to grow, then that's that's a question of now I have to be on platforms where I'm growing. So I think tailoring the content. Um, and, and creating the content for the platform is another step that you can take beyond just making content for a couple platforms. On top of that, I would say, I think guest thing is huge, man. I think that, uh, you know, I've gotten clients from being a guest on shows. I've gotten a lot of opportunities from being guests on shows. I have, um, you know, I've, I've expanded my audience from doing that. And then also creating on top of that, creating for my guests, creating content for my guest. I have a, I had a guest on who has is very successful uh, rapper and musician. And he's like, dude, listen, I can't promote this unless it's video. Unless you have the video and it's a clip that I approve, I can't, I'm not gonna post it on my story. I'm not gonna post your graphic. I'm not gonna post the pictures. I'm only gonna post what I want posted from this. And you can do whatever you want, but he's saying, I'm not gonna post it unless it's what I want. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I think a lot of people go like, oh, we made this like graphic. Why won't you post it? It's like, well, it's blue, but their brand colors are green and red and it doesn't fit their brand. And so I think these nuances are things that people don't realize. But like, if you're, if 50, if you go from 20% of your guests promoting it to 70% of your guests promoting it, you have, you just gained like, 10 20 30 40 more audiences right so that kind of those 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 different um kind of approaches are are, are smaller things that might not really take obviously if you're going to do a lit tiktok campaign it might it might be some work but just to change the graphic around to different colors so your guest promotes it is something that i've seen work and asking them what type of content they want to promote the episode that's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and just asking too. I mean, that's half the battle in my opinion, like at the, you know, during when, when we, when we interact with someone, you know, prior and then after, uh, and after the podcast, we kind of explain the, the whole process of what's going to look like, you know, when the episode is going to be released and, you know, what, what type of graphics we're going to create for the, the, the podcast. And we kind of share, you know, you know, templates and stuff like that. And then we ask them, we say, Hey, look, would you, if you're willing to share with, with your audience, it would be great. You know? And, you know, I'd say, you know, we've gotten several people to share, there th- this this uh this video format in particular on linkedin because a lot of our guests are on linkedin and they're and when we tag them in our linkedin post they're like oh this is great we'll share it and so that's what happened we released an episode i think a couple days ago and 
you know, the gentleman who we interviewed shared on his LinkedIn. He's got a very broad network of people that liked it and engaged with it. And, and we've had people that have subscribed to the, 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 the podcast as a result of that post. So similar to what you said, a lot of it has to do with the, the back end processes prior to you even, you know, releasing the episode is to, you know, get, get an understanding of what it's going to take for them to be able to share with their broad audience. Cause I'm assuming a lot of the people that you talk to are going to be people who are notable within whatever industry you're trying to target. And then from there, you know, just asking, um, we found a lot of success with that. So yeah, power, Absolutely. The power of the ask, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you don't ask it, the answer is always no, as they oh, say. Yeah. So true. That's awesome. So, yeah. you know, as we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, um, you know, the podcasting medium itself has been around for quite some time, but it's been kind of, it's been significantly growing over the last, I'd say probably five to six years. What do you think is going to happen over the next five to 10 years as far as podcasting is concerned? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's something that I've constantly thought about and I, I think, okay, so I am not uh very knowledgeable on the kind of web three metaverse stuff uh, i think that the you know metaverse virtual realities they see i don't think they'll really it doesn't look to me as from an uh, completely like somebody who doesn't really understand it uh it doesn't look to me like it's going to be extremely widely adopted the same way like cell phones are adopted right but i think that there is something interesting within that in that entire universe where what you could do is we could all get in there together on virtual reality and be sitting at a table with each other. And now it's not going to be the same, but then we can have a virtual audience who's sitting in the audience while we record this. And it's not the same as looking at your LinkedIn screen on LinkedIn live. You're actually like there, you can like look around. So there's these kind of more, uh, you know, these things that are, that nobody's really thinking about yet, that, 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 that's kind of what pops in my head. And that's a little bit out there for sure. Uh, but, but I'm excited to see, what happens with that. And then, you know, I think in terms of audio, I mean, audio itself, there's these really interesting developments that are that are happening now where you can an AI can just analyze your voice and then just basically let it it can say whatever you want it to say in your voice. So that's a little bit scary. But also there's things that you'll be able to do with that where if you just, oh man, I wish I worded this question different. You type in what the, you want the question to be, click enter, and then boom, it creates that question for you. And so there's these like little things that, I, I, I'm, that I'm excited to see, uh, you know, how they turn out. But I think just the consumption is going to be, uh, is going to continue to grow, you know, in these multiple different media formats and podcasting is going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to be dominant. And I think it's the biggest media format in the world right now. And I think that's going to take over. Um, but I think we're going to see as well to kind of complete the thought. I think we're going to see the long form being a lot more popular because people want this sort of more, um, you know, uh, longer duration, not less, less scripted and put together. People are really starting to value what, what was before, which was in politics, people had debates. There was two sides. There was one person on one side or multiple sides, but then one person on the other side. And then people would sit in the audience, they would debate. And then at the end they would decide like, Oh, that guy's more compelling or this girl's more compelling. And so I think we're almost like coming back to that, where we went into this media culture of just like, you know, uh, TMZ and just the news and, and all these trusted sources now being way less trusted. So that's another thing that's going to propel podcasts to be this kind of more trusted medium because it's, you know, a little bit more unbiased than, than say your traditional legacy media. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, you, you just see it through the, the Joe Rogan downloads. I mean, I just saw a graphic the other day where it showcased that I think e e the average Joe Rogan podcast episode gets 11,000 downloads. And then if you were to sum up 11 the, million, I think 11, I'm that, sorry, that was it. You're yeah. right. I completely biffed that one. No, it's 11 million per episode. And this guy releases, I think three or four episodes a week. And you know, the, if you, if you sum up like Fox news, CNN, and all these other news sources, it doesn't even add up to 11 million. So He's literally more listened to than all the other major news outlets combined. So it's, it's unbelievable the impact that he's had on, on podcasting as a whole. And it just goes to show, you know, the power that, that this medium has. And I kind of wanted to add on to that regarding the metaverse. I, I was kind of thinking about that the other day. I was just like, man, wouldn't that be interesting to see like live format podcasts? Similar, like imagine Joe Rogan doing his podcast in the metaverse and you have like, 2000 people or 3000 people just sitting there virtually and being able to engage with that. I think that in and of itself is going to be pretty popular. 
uh, going forward as well. So that it's interesting to hear you say that. Yeah. It'd be very intriguing to see, see that, how that uh, trajectory goes for that. But um, so the question that we start uh, asking every podcast guest is uh, what is one of the most impactful books, but I'd like to add for you is what is the most impactful podcast that you, that you actually listen to? Um, I know you're going to probably say Joe Rogan's one. So uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's one. And I don't have, I do have a favorite, I do have a favorite band, but there's certain things where I'm like, I can't pick a favorite. There's like too many, um, you know, but yeah, a book, I'll say the, my favorite book is called the war of art by Steven Pressfield. And it's a play on the art of war, but it's, it's not really similar, but it's just this incredible thing where if you're creating anything at all, it's going to be beneficial and it helps you overcome resistance. Right. Um, and another book I just want to plug just because I'm here is, um, why 75% of podcasters fail. I'll link you guys up with these guys who wrote this. Um, and maybe, maybe you can even have them on. I'm, I'm featured in the book and they have, um, they have that it's by Daniel Larson, uh, which is a, which is a pen name and, and they write books all about podcasting. Podcast marketing is one of them. So, um, they're nice. doing big things in the, in the space of podcasting books. Um, but yeah, as far as most notable podcasts for me, yeah, Joe Rogan's up there is my probably number one, most watched and listen to i've watched probably out of the 15 1600 episodes probably 1200 of them 1300 of them i've watched and some of them are three hours so do the math on that um but yeah other than that tim ferris is huge he's been massively impactful for me not only his books but his podcast as well uh impact theory with tom billy love his content uh and and yeah i mean most of there's there's definitely other shows uh naval ravikant's podcast i think it's just called naval which is a two-minute podcast which is interesting i don't love the format but once again like there is no right way to do a lot of these things so those are just a few i mean i could (laughs) go off probably an hour on all these ones that i consume but those are my main big ones for sure that's awesome, man. Yeah, I know. I, and I can attest to several of those, especially Tim Ferriss. You know, I, he was probably one of the, the first, I mean, at least the big, big, big time podcasters uh, that I remember. And I remember reading his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which I know for a lot of people is, is like a game-changing book that kind of completely changed the way that they approach their, their day-to-day life and, oper- and business. Um, and so, you know, I can attest to all those ones. But he great. works like 8 to 12 hours a week now, so it didn't work. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because people would be on his podcast and be like, how much you working, Tim? And, you know, obviously it wasn't for that. But, yeah, man, 700 million downloads. They told him – people told him not to start it. How crazy is that? Biggest podcast in the world, top 10 in the world. And people were like, nah, it's not going to work. And that was in 2000 2000- – like 12 when people were like, no, nah, podcast is not going to take off. And it's just incredible, yeah. man. One of those I things mean, don't <laughs> his podcast may have been around before then, too, because I mean, I was in college between 2009 and 2013. And I think he was even before then. Maybe like, it was I... 2007 or eight. Maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because I mean, it was yeah. he was like one of the original, like, you know, big time podcasters. And I remember re- listening to a few of his episodes during while I was in college. And obviously I read his book. And what's interesting about the the title itself is that he had it named something else. And then he put out like a, a feeler to his audience about different titles. And the four hour work week was the one that stuck the most. And so he kind of changed it to that title. That's a testament and, to using your audience too. And I, I've surveyed my audience about my podcast and, 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 and had some interesting findings. So yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, no, I, and we probably should do more of that to be quite honest with you. I, I I've had, we've had people reach out to us about, you know, just the different episodes that they really like enjoyed. And I keep telling them, I said, Hey, look, if you'd like to, you know, hear anything else in particular, let us know. I mean, again, we're always looking for great guests to have on our podcast. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what we always keep, keep, keep on the top of mind. Well, dude, Ryan, it was great having you on the podcast. We greatly appreciate your time. I know you guys are going to be a big deal in the podcast space and we're, we're really honored to know you and then get to know you in this podcast. So one thing I wanted to ask, and this is what we ask all our guests at the end of the episode is to contribute something to what we call the commercial real estate treasure chest. It's a repository of resources that we make available to our audience. And, you know, our guests have, have contributed like helpful PDFs, uh, Excel files, eBooks, really you name it pertaining to digital media. Uh, I don't know if you have something you'd like to contribute today. Yeah. So I have the podcast guesting guide It's the four step guide on how to be a guest on podcast. If you're listening right now and you're somebody that's saying, I'd like to be a guest on podcast, but I haven't been on one yet. Then this guide is perfect for you. Four steps, super simple. Um, it's really the most simple approach to it. It's not doing anything like high level, you know, scripting or anything basically just gets you prepared and confident to, to be on podcast. And at the end, I have an ex- exact script that I've used um, uh, and, and, and that you could copy and paste and use for yourself and try it out for yourself. It has ways to find these 
these podcasts as well. There's a lot of podcasts, but how do you sift through them? So there's, um, I have some thoughts on that too. So that's the podcast guesting guide. I'm going to include a link to that that you guys can throw in the show notes. Um, I also have an Excel document um, on that resources page too, which is the uh, podcast master sheet. And what that is, it's just a way, super simple Excel sheet, uh, Google Sheets on organizing your podcast. So if you do take that jump and uh, you are going to start a podcast, that'll be helpful too. But uh, the guesting guide is a great way, great place to start. Yeah. That's amazing. Really? And yeah. 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 And and I mean, I think that, uh, you know, being a guest on other people's podcasts is, is huge, being able to leverage their audience to now grow your audience as well. And, you know, I know Jeff, Jeff's been on several, I've been on several and, yeah. you know, it's made a difference. So. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's actually grown my uh, uh, followers essentially just being on just another person's podcast, in Florida, uh, Canada, you know, all across the U S and it's, it's amazing. Um, so speaking of that, this has been amazing. I really appreciate you coming on Ryan, uh, and, and dropping all your knowledge for podcasts. So I know people are going to want to get in contact with you. So what, uh, type of, uh, contact information would you, and ways to get in contact for you? Yeah, I'll send you guys both websites too. So it's podcastprinciples.com and sullybop.com. That's S-U-L-L-Y-B-O-P. And that's my personal site for, I'm a DJ and a rapper and stuff like that. So that's my other life. And so those are my two sites. You can find all my socials. Um, it's it, it, Don't look up Ryan Sullivan. It's pr you probably won't find me. Just I don't have good SEO on my name. But, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's not as bad as like, you know, uh, Joe Smith or something like that. But I'm basically, I'm like top five for most common names. But but yeah, podcast principles or Sully Bop, S U L L Y B O P. Um, those you'll find me if you just Google that or search it up anywhere, any social platform. I'm on every platform with multiple accounts, so definitely find me on those. Awesome, yeah, I know. And, yeah. and we'll like 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 Ryan was saying, we'll include all those uh, links in the description below. So if you guys are watching this in a YouTube format, it's going to be in the description below. And if you guys are listening to this in a podcast format, whether that's uh, Spotify, Anchor, etc., it's going to be in the show notes as well. So. Again, thank you all for tuning in this week. Uh, if, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, we would greatly appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message. If you guys are listening to this in a podcast format, whether that's Anchor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Spotify, Apple, et cetera, we would greatly appreciate it if you leave us a five-star review. We've seen a significant uptick in our downloads as a result of you guys doing so, and it would absolutely mean the world to us so we can reach a broader audience and make sure that people learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So if you haven't already, take, take a few seconds, leave us a five-star review. It would be greatly appreciated. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.